Hey folks, I'm sure a lot of you have targeted flounder in those shallow waters, but today I'm gonna show you a cool way to target flounder offshore in 40 foot of water. Fox Sports Outdoors is on the air right now. You're watching the only program with weekly fishing reports and real-time outdoor news from the Southwest region. This is Fox Sports Outdoors. Hi folks and welcome to the show. I'm Captain E and it's my pleasure to sit in this week as your host of Fox Sports Outdoors. You may recognize me in the Southeast as your Carolina's reporter. And for those of you out in the Southwest, it's my pleasure to be sitting in for Barry this week. I've got a distinct pleasure of bringing you to my backyard here in Merle's Inlet, South Carolina, and show you the incredible fishery that we have here. Right now, we're on the Merle's Inlet Marsh Walk. As you can see, we've got tons of stuff to do down here. Great food, great water sports, and great fishing. I've got Barry's Blazer Bay 2420 GTS, and I'm gonna head out and we're gonna do some fishing on the near shore reef with a special guest. Mr. Barry Stokes is my guest this week. We're also, while we're on the reef, gonna be sharing some great regional reports from your area to see what's happening and what's fighting in your backyard. Right now, I'm gonna grab the Blazer Bay, go find Barry. We're gonna head out to the reef and we're taking you back to the studio for your weekend planner. The Salooner tables are predicting fair game fish activity for both days this weekend, with peak daytime action beginning early on each day at around 10 a.m. in the morning. Also, remember that daylight savings time comes to end on Sunday at 2 a.m., so set those clocks back one hour. Look for the sun to rise at 747 and set at 634 on Saturday, with everything then shifting back one hour on Sunday due to the time change. And evenings will feature a crescent moon that is 18% visible. Stay with us for freshwater and coastal fishing information from around the region. Plus, I'll return with catfishing expert Chad Ferguson to answer this week's Ask the Pro question. All right, folks, it is my pleasure to introduce my guest this week, Mr. Barry Stokes. You may recognize him. <laughs> Barry, it's a pleasure to have you on board with us. Well, I tell you, it's fun to come to South Carolina, and this is going to be a treat for me because I'm going to just be the guest on the show today. I'm going to relax, try to catch me a few flounder, let you do all the hard work today. You know what? I've enjoyed working with Fox Sports Outdoors. I've enjoyed becoming friends with you, and I love having you come into town to go fishing. i got a treat for you today. Where are we going? We're going to go to the Near Shore Reef, you know, South Carolina is known and North Carolina for having great artificial man-made reefs and we're gonna head out to about 40 foot of water target some flounder typically you'll get your bigger flounder out in that deeper area so hopefully we're gonna have a great time out there all right let's go buddy we are I'll tell you what folks we're gonna come back on the other side of this break Barry and I are gonna be doing battle with some flounders don't go anywhere Fox Sports Outdoors is brought to you by Motor Guide's new wireless and easy to use XI3. XI batteries powering the world forward. Waypoint Marine, the Gulf Coast's leading saltwater boating specialist. And Strike King, designed by the pros, fished by you. There's a reef flounder. That's a nice one, 21, 22 inches. Big fish, hit that mullet, right, I mean mud minnow right on top of the structure. fish yeah yeah this is this nice fish here yeah taking some drag and i tell you what you know like we said we're coming out to the near shore reefs here well, look here i've got one too but it's a little this bitty is one. a man-made reef part of it was put here by the state a lot of it was funded by private groups oh this is a very nice flounder barry i'm gonna need the net buddy i'm gonna need the net there we go. Got him. Oh, look right at that. There we go, buddy. I'll tell you what, this time of the year, Barry, this is the this is the flounder we look for on the reef. Okay, so uh look at that. Look that look at that's a that's a there doormat. you go. There's a reef flounder. There's a reef flounder. That's a nice one. 21, 22 inches. Big fish hit that mullet right, I mean mud men are right on top of the structure. And like I said, we've moved. Now we've gotten right on top of the structure, but we've been moving forward, bumping forward. This current really flowing. And now that we've gotten on the opposite side of it, I think we're gonna find the fish stacked up here. You, you put that fish in the boat, we got this nice one, but great to have these man-made reefs in South Carolina, considering we don't have much in the way of natural reefs out here. Explain to the folks what these are that we're fishing. Okay, what, we're, what are these structures? The area that I just caught this fish on is actually a uh, cement barge that was sunk here years ago. 
Um, and we've got some concrete reef balls around here. You've got armor personnel carriers out here. We're on a reef called Paradise Reef. Um, you've had a lot of private companies and private groups that have put in uh, structure here. DNR will meet your funds. If you re raise up to $5,000, they'll meet it to put structure out here. You've got concrete uh, piping out here, but it is what these flounder want. They love these nearshore reefs with good structure that they can get around and lots of food. Okay, well, we've got a great start here. That's a good Most one. Most definitely. And this one is not getting released, right? No, I mean, this is going to get released in the, the Crisco. Grease. In the Crisco, exactly. baby. All right, we're off to a great start. Way to yeah, go, man. buddy. Back Thank to the, you. Back to the live well, that one goes. Hi, folks. This week's Lone Star Lakes is brought to you once again by the good folks at Breckland Ranch. Family run, family owned Breckland finds family very important. So bring your family as kids hunt free with paid adults. Now, this week we're going to start in East Texas. Big Sam, Lake Sam Rayburn, just returned from a trip there and they have some fantastic action for crappie right now out on the brush piles. And there are hundreds and hundreds of brush piles on the lake. Start at Main Lake Points, that'll be the easiest way to pin down some of those many, many brush piles. You'll drop your jigs and of course your crappie rigs with minnows onto those brush piles to catch your Sam Rayburn crappie. Now they also have great bass fishing right now. The lake is up about a foot and you'll find bass biting several different baits. First of all, you can start with your topwaters. Your whopper ploppers and your buzz baits are working particularly well. Look for places where the grass has had the water level come up six inches to a foot above where the grass is. When you see that, you'll also be able to run your spinner baits and sinkos over the top of the grass and a swim jig, maybe half ounce white chartreuse with a white Zacco Yamamoto trailer, and you'll swim that through those leafy grasses until you catch your bass. That's been this week's Lone Star Lakes, brought to you once again by the good folks at the Breckland Ranch. Check us out on Facebook, Lone Star Lakes. We're taking a break, but first, here are a few pictures from our Big Catch of the Week contest. These photos were not picked as winners, but we still wanted you to see some of the fantastic catches from around the region. We'll reveal this week's winner in just a bit toward the end of today's program. We're coming right back. beautiful fish in the water right there. That's a little better fish. Oh yeah. Okay, now slip the net under. Here we go. Got it. Got it. Got it. There got we go. It. Welcome back. We are on the fishing on the reef right here outside of Merle's Inlet, our nearshore reef, a man-made reef, and it looks like Barry might actually be hooked up to a pretty good flounder here. Oh yeah. That's a decent fish. Oh yes. There we go. That's a little better fish. That's oh yeah. Deeper. Okay, now slip the net under. Okay. There we go. There we go. All right. All right. We got us a fish good on. One. There yeah, we man. go, baby. That's what I'm talking about. Wow, that's a good good dinner there, Barry. I tell you what, that, you know, this time of the year or whether you come in fall, spring, winter, typically on the near shore reef you're gonna find your bigger flounder. It's transition, probably June. In October are the two best times of the year to get out here. you got transition, fish coming from offshore, inshore in June, fish going from inshore, offshore to spawn in October. You can find a lot of big fish on the nearshore reefs. And again, we're on Paradise Reef, located about three miles out of Merle's Inlet here. But there's plenty of reefs around here, some that are five miles, 10 miles, 40 foot of water, 60 foot of water, and we're in here in 30 foot of water. But those are probably the best times of the year to get out here and concentrate looking for flounder. Like this. June. And June and October. And October. So if, you're, yep. if you want to plan a trip around this, maybe a vacation or something, 
those would be your two prime months. Two prime months to get down. Here. Now you can actually catch flounder here year round, right? Oh, definitely. In the summertime, when the when the heat's at its best, if you're if you're patient and get out here and spend time, you can weed through the smaller fish and catch plenty of flounder out here. You know, it's just if you if you're patient and want to spend that time. You but, can also catch some inshore inside merles. Oh, most right? definitely. Yes, sir. Inshore in the summertime, inshore in the fall is really good in Merles Inlet here. But typically, if you're going to find these bigger flounder concentrated in areas with good numbers, it's going to be on these nearshore reefs. Okay, so bigger ones, come on out here, be brave, come a little offshore, find you a good day. It, it has turned off dead slick calm out here right now. It's almost like fishing on a lake. Yep. It's so beautiful out here today. and. It pays off with a flounder like that one right there. That's a good one, buddy. Five me one time, big good boy. Job, and guess man. where this one's going? Where's that one going? In that line. Yes, he is. <laughs> <laughs> good job, right, buddy. There we go. Well, our fish are starting to bunch up here in Oklahoma, but that's what we want them doing this time of year. It may mean you have to spend some time looking for those schools, but once you locate them, they are biting, you can catch them. Two great examples, one is Lake Murray. Charles Jewell said that although that lake is full and has actually been spilling over, he's having his best success for smallmouth right there close to the dam, fishing very tight, very slow, right on the bottom, 10 to 12 foot of water. Best success is coming on Texas rigged soft plastics, creature baits mostly, watermelon pepper color. He also said he's been having good success on his twin tail grub in those watermelon color variations. And along with a small mouth, he's also picking up some really big white bass. White bass, small mouth, Lake Murray on the bottom, 10 to 12, 16 foot of water. Also grouped up are the crappie on Grand Lake. Crappie guide Adam Mason says on Grand, he's catching those fish suspended about 10 foot over 15 to 25 foot of water. They're really starting to congregate around the docks, but he's also catching them suspended over brush piles, not in the brush piles, but over them. Think about that, 10 foot deep, over 15 to 25 foot of water. Best success has come on the Bobby Garland baby shad in monkey milk color, but he also pointed out he hadn't been experimenting a whole lot beyond the monkey milk color, so you might want to do some of that on your outing to Grand Lake. White bass, crappie, smallmouth, you can catch them, but you can't catch them if you don't go. right off the edge of, oh look right there right off the edge of that structure boy that there he cool. is again yeah that's that a, a good one feels like a good one feels like a good one yeah Let's see what we you got. know he just there we go there. i'll let you net him that's he's a decent fish he's definitely a keeper yeah, yeah there's a keeper flounder for you right there but that was a uh, textbook hit I, I drug it and right in the middle of bringing in my slack he picked it up and thud and uh you know this technique works great and again there's so many different ways you can fish for them i love fishing carolina rigs out here with good live bait um basically just slow dragging the bait all right there we go barry i mean definitely a you know a good keeper here Hold him upside, so that fish will go how long probably i, I guess any 16 inches i'm well, a, you know 16 inches definitely a keeper. enough to definitely go in our live well buddy uh, we got a flounder well. We hey, got look a flounder here. party coming We do. Evening. I've got you in town from Texas. I got to feed you good. <laughs> okay. I got to feed you good, but okay. the technique's working great. Let's talk a little more about the technique. In fact, I'll take this fish back to the live well okay. safely. And you uh, kind of walk folks through this Carolina rigging technique because it's working today real it's, well. It's working great. And what we've got here, folks, is a, is a Carolina rig. I've got a three quarter ounce egg sinker right here. I've got a swivel. And then what I've got is about two foot of fluorocarbon leader. We're using 20 pounds. And I've got a number two offset kale nickel hook here. And you can see here what the bait is, mud minnows. You can use mud minnows, uh, mullet, manhaden, it doesn't matter. Real quick, I'll show you what we're doing. And all I'm doing is casting away from the structure, just like you know we're sitting right, right now on top of a cement barge that was sunk here by DNR to create this great artificial reef. I let it get to the bottom. Then all I'm doing is just slowly working it, just dragging it along the bottom looking for any pressure change as I'm pulling it back. And I'm not looking for the doom, 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 doom. That's gonna be trash fish, black sea bass, pinfish, things of that nature. What I'm looking for is that steady pull back. When I feel that, I'm pointing the rod at him, five seconds, setting the hook, bam, on the end of the rod, nice thing. Fox Sports Outdoors is brought to you by Nitro Performance Fishing Boats. Champions aren't born, they're made. Mercury Outboards, go boldly. 
Gulf Shores and Orange Beach, Alabama. Plan your fishing vacation and catch the details at orangebeach.com slash fishing. And Lorenz and the new Hook 2, the world's easiest fish finder. I've gotten a bite on probably six or seven casts in a row, and, and, and it's coming down one little spot just outside the structure. Now, why is that? Got a bite. One, two, three, four, five. Got him. Just All like, right. Just like that. Right back here in Merle's Inlet, fishing on this near shore reef, and Barry is just putting the beat down on me now. <laughs> you are got putting the little, beat down. I've got a is little it? sweet spot. That's a decent flounder. That'd be yeah. a, probably a close to a keeper right, yep, right there. Yep, there we go. Oh, he flopped down on the floor, so I'll grab him. Well, I think we might have found a sweet spot right here as far as numbers of fish right now. You're getting a bite about every cast. I am. I, I've gotten a bite on probably six or seven casts in a row, and, and, and it's coming down one little spot just outside the structure. Now, why is that? Well, they, they will tend to stack up in a sweet spot. Like you, you're, you're calling it sweet spot. It's a great terminology. And it's an area where the current might be just perfect. The bait's getting called in there and they will lay on top of each other and get stacked in there. And I tell you what, with your unit, we've got a good picture of that. So we've got our Lowrance HDS carbon 12 inch unit back here. We drove across some of this structure. In fact, we'll show you folks a little bit of what it looks like. Why don't you describe some of what we're looking at here? Well, what we're looking at right here is we're on the edge of a cement barge. They sunk it down. Obviously, it's been here for years. The sand's built up, but we're fishing right on the northern edge of it. We're fishing on the north side of that where it lays basically south to north. And we're right now the fish, it seems to me, your sweet spot, which is on that side of the boat, your fish are laying just on the outside of it and really tight to the structure because you're either getting hung up or you're catching a fish every time. And that's the way it works. And you know, you can stay in one area and concentrate as long as we're catching fish and we're gonna filter through and get some bigger fish. If you're not catching fish, keep moving around and keep looking for that sweet spot. Okay, so uh, stay put. You, you find that little spot. Little spot. Exactly. We've got our motor guide XI-5 holding us right on the spot or throw an anchor out. Don't move if you're catching fish. Right? That's right, don't All move, right. XI-5. All right. Well, well, we'll measure that one because we're trying to eat some today. We and, are. Uh, if he's a keeper, he'll go in. If not, he's going back. Good job. Hi, I'm Captain Joey Farah with your South Texas Region Report brought to you by Marker 37 Marina, Waypoint Marine, Anetic Performance Wear, and DOA Lures. Hey, this week, our fish are really feeling the chill of winter coming on them, and it's starting a feeding frenzy. We're seeing on the calm days loads of nice two to three foot black tip sharks out at the rigs in Corpus Christi Bay on live bait and cut mullet. A lot of live shrimp action out there too when it's calm for specks and sand trout under a cork around those rig pilots. In the Laguna Madre with our higher tides still in the bay, drift fishing is the name of the game. We're drift fishing around those spoil islands and submerged dumps along the intercoastal waterway and catching a lot of reds, trout, and some drum. And down in Baffin around those big rock piles the black drum and sheephead are getting thick, and that's a great way to fill up the box. Down in Port Mansfield, the East Cut is turning on for flounder like crazy, We're using small pin perch, mud minnows, and little uh, finger mullet on a Carolina rig along where those cuts are emptying out of the shallow water into the channel. Folks, fall here in the Laguna Madre goes wild. We got unbelievable duck hunting for you and excellent world-class fishing. You can follow all of our hookups on Facebook at Captain Joey Ferris Backwater Fishing. There's a hit. There's a hit. He got it. That's a good pull. Got doubles? Ah, You're yeah, but I don't. Me. I don't think I got a flounder here. I'm gonna get in real quick. This yeah, you got flounder. something nice. Yeah, we need we need a net right here. Yeah, I don't I'm know coming. what I got, I'm but coming. it feels Let's... it feels good. I'm gonna leave my little black bass hanging out over here. Yeah, that's a good flounder. Yep. Just a keeper. Just another good keeper. keeper. All right, there we, there we go. go. Get out of the way here, Barry. That's just another good solid. That'd be a, what, a 15 inch keeper or something like oh, that? Oh, that's definitely, yeah, he's right in that range. A little bit thinner than, than the others we have, but 
I'll tell you one thing, if you don't think it makes a big difference looking at that bottom machine and watching what we're fishing on, the structure here, we made a little bit of a move and we, as we came across the top, we, we put the X5 into work and we're sitting right here on top of this area and we're starting to catch fish again. The tide has changed, the current's flowing different. So using that low rance has made a big difference. I'm gonna walk this one back there, measure him. If he's a keeper, I'll put him in the live well. But while I'm doing that, why don't you explain to the folks how diverse this fishery is around here? We got lots of different things. Beginning with, you put me on my first cobia. Talk a little bit about that, the kingfish, and then some of the uh, inshore stuff. Exactly, you know, it's always a pleasure to have Barry come into town and visit us over here in, in Merle's Inlet, South Carolina. But we do have an incredible fishery and it's year round here. We were able to sneak out. We did a little bit of nearshore fishing, caught king mackerel, caught some nice cobia. Also slid back into the creeks. I took Barry out and we caught some speckled trout. Um, great fishery here. The inshore flounder fishery here is incredible. Redfish, black drum on the reefs, just like what we're doing today. You can catch a lot of Spanish mackerel, king mackerel. Such a diverse fishery here. And we'll tell you later on in the show exactly how to get your trip booked so that you can come down and enjoy this fishery as well. You can always watch our latest episode on the front page of our website at foxsportsoutdoors.com. Catch up on past episodes by clicking the archive button and learn about fishing techniques and new gear at our how-to page. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter for new fishing videos every day. Simply search for Fox Sports Outdoors and click the like button on Facebook and follow button on Twitter. And watch a new episode every week on any device by downloading the free Waypoint TV app on your phone tablet, computer, or smart TV. Fox Sports Outdoors is brought to you by Lou's. Feel the difference. Gene LaRue and Bobby Garland. We know bass and crappie from heads to tails. And by Glacier Glove. Stay outdoors longer with our gloves, hats, and shades. Welcome back everyone, it's time for the Ask the Pro segment where viewers get expert advice from professional insiders. This week's question comes from Shane who asks, do the really big blue catfish live in deep water year round? For an answer, we checked with catfishing expert Chad Ferguson. Big catfish are what I like to call opportunistic predators. They're going to go where the food is and they love to follow schools of shad or other bait fish. It takes a lot of food to sustain those big fish, so they're generally gonna be close to where the food is or where there's warmer water that makes them feel good. I catch big catfish everywhere from the deepest parts of the lakes all the way up to inches of water at certain times of the year. So they're gonna move all throughout the water column and in every depth of water that there is to chase the food and stay fed. Thank you, Chad. If you have something to ask one of the pros, visit our website and follow the Ask the Pro link to submit your question. Now, let's take a look at this week's Big Cat Twitter. Hey folks, we're back on shore. We've got the boat on the trailer and it's time now for this week's winner of the Big Catch of the Week contest. Tony Lyons of Colcord, Oklahoma, with an eight pound, seven ounce largemouth bass caught on Lake Yuchi, Oklahoma. If you'd like to enter the contest, go to our website at foxsportsoutdoors.com and click on the big catch of the week and follow the instructions to send your photo in. All right, folks, we've already showed you all the gear that we used on today's show, but if you want to come down and do a trip, you don't need to bring any gear. You can contact my partners at Crazy System Marina to get everything set up. These guys do all the work for you. If you'll visit crazysister.com, click on charters, you can find all the information you need to book a trip and do the same thing that Barry and I did today. All right, folks, it's been my sincere pleasure to sit in and be your host this week and have Barry actually join me as a guest. But next week, we'll be right back in our spots where we're supposed to be Barry in front of the camera, me giving your Carolinas report. But until then, remember, fish smarter, not harder, and keep your chaos organized. See you later.